Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So the first disease that we will discuss in the nephritic syndrome is acute proliferative glomerulonephritis. So as the name shows, there is proliferation of the glomerular cells which typically appear as hypercellular glomeruli in the microscope. And there is inflammation which is due to the recruitment of white blood cells in the glomeruli. So both the proliferation and inflammation goes on hand in hand, damaging the glomeruli. The inciting agents in these cases are the antigens which form the immune complexes. So these antigens can either be endogenous such as in certain autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE or these antigens can be exogenous which means they are acquired from the outside such as in group A beta hemolytic infections in which there is a specific exotoxin known as exotoxin B which acts as an antigen. So these antigens either endogenous or exogenous form antigen antibody complex resulting in the glomerular inflammation. So post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a form of acute proliferative glomerulonephritis in which there is a typical history of group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection. The infection could be either skin infection which is known as impetigo or it could be throat infection which is known as pharyngitis. The disease occurs within 4 weeks of the infection and it typically involves children between 6 to 10 years of age. It rarely also occurs in the adults. Coming on towards the pathogenesis, so there is either a skin infection or pharyngeal infection of group A beta hemolytic streptococci. This bacteria releases a specific exotoxin known as exotoxin B which acts as an antigen in this case. So exotoxin B once released into the blood it deposits on the capillary walls in the glomeruli. So these antigens attract the antibodies and form immune complexes or antigen antibody complexes. As you can see in this figure these are antigens which are attached by the antibodies. So these antigen antibody complexes damage the glomerular basement membrane. So once this glomerular basement membrane is damaged these immune complexes associate into respective antigen and antibodies. So these antigen and antigens and antibodies are transported across the glomerular basement membrane where they bind again on the subepithelial side of glomerular basement membranes. So these are the antibodies and these are the antigens that have deposited on the subepithelial side of glomerular basement membrane. These are the foot processes of the podocytes as you can see. And once these antigens deposit between the food processes of the podocytes, the antibodies attach themselves to these antigens forming antigen antibody complexes. So these antigen antibody complexes damage the food process of the podocytes resulting in increased transport of red blood cells, white blood cells and proteins across the glomerular basement membrane into the urine. Hence the patient presents with the hematuria, increased white blood cells in the urine and proteinuria. So all these factors lead towards the development of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Coming on towards the histological picture, as you can see in the diagram, this is a glomeruli which typically appear as hypercellular. This hypercellularity is due to proliferation of glomerular endothelium and mesangial cells. There is also increased presence of neutrophils and other inflammatory cells contributing towards hypercellularity of the glomeruli. The endothelial cells are enlarged and proliferative. So this enlargement of these cells results in the decreased size of the fenestrations in the capillary walls resulting in decreased glomerular filtration rate which ultimately leads to activation of renin-angiotensin system which elevates the blood pressure. The renal tubules might also contain the inflammatory cells such as neutrophils and macrophages and casts of red blood cells that are transported due to the damaged podocytes or the foot processes of the podocytes. Immunofluorescence microscopy shows granular deposition of antigen antibody complexes. The antibodies are mostly IgG and C3. In rare cases IgM antibodies are also present. In this case what you have to remember is that the immune complex deposition is always in the granular fashion. The electron microscopy reveals humps of immune complexes within the mesangium and glomerular basement membrane besides the damaged tissues.
So PSGN typically presents in the age group of 6 to 10 years and the child presents with fever and nausea. The specific symptoms include oliguria which means decreased urinary output and cola colored urine which is due to the presence of casts of RBCs in the urine. Hematuria means presence of blood and proteinuria is also present. Since post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a nephritic syndrome, proteinuria is typically less than 3.5 grams per day. Elevated blood pressure might also be present and periorbital edema is due to decreased osmotic pressure resulting in extravasation of fluid from the capillaries. There is also a history of streptococcal infection which can be either skin infection or throat infection. So the first lab test that you have to do is urine analysis which reveals presence of red blood cells and proteins less than 3.5 grams per day. Definite diagnosis is established on histological studies of the biopsy and since these diseases are immune mediated, immunosuppressants such as steroids and methotrexate are used to treat these patients. So let's go through a clinical case. An 8 year old boy presents in the clinic with the history of fever, malaise, cola colored urine. Just to recall the cola colored urine is due to presence of RBC casts in urine and periorbital swelling for one week. The mother says he had sore throat four weeks back. So there is history of sore throat. All the signs and symptoms point towards the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So the provisional diagnosis is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The next appropriate test that you will conduct is urine analysis which reveals proteinuria less than 3.5 grams per day. The definite diagnosis is established on histological study of the biopsy. That brings us to the end of the lesson. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.